Hi everybody, Dan Ullman, Mike Beer. The feature race at Aqueduct on Saturday is the $100,000 Cicada Stakes for three-year-old fillies going six furlongs. If you bet the Cicada, if you bet the Aqueduct card on Saturday and you sign up for a new DRF Bets account, will you double your action immediately? Bet 100, get 100 with DRF Bets. Let's meet the field of three-year-old fillies getting set to travel six furlongs in the Cicada. And Mike, the number two stones in the road is walking in the footsteps of her sire, Bustin Stones. Bustin Stones was undefeated. Stones in the road, a perfect three for three, and she's just shown brilliant early speed in all three of her starts. How much was she helped last time out when Forgotten Hero, expected yeah. to be a pace challenger, didn't break very well? I mean, she was helped a lot in that race. Um, and this isn't to take um, anything away from what she's done so far because she's actually shown herself to be pretty good. Um, but she had all the best of it last time. Once um, Forgotten Hero had trouble at the start, this horse got absolutely loose. The pace wasn't fast, and she was in complete control of that race, and she won very easily at the end. Two starts back, it was sort of a similar situation. She just got loose on a gold rail and never faced a challenge. Um, I happen to think she's pretty good, Dan, but the waters are getting deeper here. There's a lot of speed in this race. It seems like she's not just going to stroll to the front in this race. This might be a good shot, to, uh, a good race to take a shot against her if she's a short price. She will face open company for the first time, and as Mike mentions, other speeds, as we see from the Time Form U.S. Pace Projector, which has Stones in the Road sitting third, an unfamiliar spot for Stones in the Road if this Pace Projector after a quarter mile comes true. They are expecting a fast pace to be set by the number one fangirl who beat three next out winners when winning her maiden last time out. She's got a nice little pedigree. One of the horses she beat, Gracetown, is back in this field. Yeah, I mean, listen, she ran well last time. Her first career start, she got sort of hooked up on the pace. She had good speed in that race. She wound up dueling. She got tired in the stretch last time. Sort of a similar situation. She did um, get clear early, but she had to use her speed from the rail on that race just to get to the front. And then she took on the challenge, um, was able to hold on at the end. I think she ran well, Dan. This just feels like a really tough spot for her because you know that she has to go from the inside. There's speed to her outside. She's just going to have to run a lot better than she's running her first two starts. The aforementioned Forgotten Hero got off to a great start to her career, winning both of her starts as a two-year-old, although a little bit fractious in the gate before she won the New York Stallion mm -hmm. Series. And then in her first start at three, she kind of got pinched back at the start yeah. and never got an opportunity to show what she can do. Those are some competitive buyer speed figures for a two-year-old filly with an alert break. Break, she can be right up there close to the pace. Yeah, I think this is a, it's a, not unreasonable to expect her to just run a lot better in this race. I mean, to me, she lost all chance in the Franklin Square. At the start of that race, squeezed between horses, wound up at the back of that field, and you could just see Mike Luzzi decide to just, we'll just sit here. We're not going to send her or rush her into the race. We'll sit and we'll take a shot. It, it didn't work out for her last time. She is a lot better than that. Um, I'm expecting her to run a much better race this time. Like Stones in the Road, she will face open company for the first time. Grace Town was nosed by Fangirl two starts back. She came back to win a maiden in her second start of the form cycle. We'll be reeling back in a little bit less than three weeks for the Cicada. I didn't love the field she beat last time out, and she was supposed to beat him at four to five. I mean, I agree with all that stuff. I didn't think she beat a great field. Um, she just sort of ran the same race she had run the time before when she just missed to Fangirl. Not that she ran poorly in either of those races, Dan. She has to run better than that in here. Miss Imperial, the number eight, just didn't see out the seven furlongs last time out in the ruthless stakes on January. January the 27th. She was three wide prompting the pace, attacked the rail skimming winner on the turn and uh, just couldn't get past that foe. She was easily second best that day. Yeah. She draws the outside post, which means that she can keep an eye on the horses to the inside. And as Timeform US says, there is a fast pace expected. Just look at this Jason Service Formulator fact. Over the past year, with three-year-old dirt sprinters returning off a 45 to 60 day layoff, that's nine for 11, 11 for 11 on the board, a $3 ROI. I know that field hasn't come back strong, the ruthless, yeah. but Miss Imperial has the speed to find a good spot just off the pace. Yeah, and it just feels like that's the kind of trip she'll get in here. That's how they rode her in each of her first two wins, um, two and three starts back. She had speed to get forward, but they weren't, you know, attacking the pace. They're just tracking it and then taking over. I thought she was impressive winning both of those. And I think she ran fine last time. Then I'm sort of with you that the, the seven furlongs feels like it worked against her. 
It's also worth noting that was a very strong rail day at Aqueduct. She could not get over to the inside. That's where the winner was. Um, and I think she paid the price for that at the end. This is a great spot for her to take up a tracking spot on the outside and just see if she's better than these horses. The great Todd Pletcher has two fillies entered in this race. The number six guacamole dips her toes back into stakes competition after getting a confidence building win over a wet track. And she kind of likes wet tracks. Yeah. Both of her wins have come over those sort of surfaces. She's also a great stakes place over good going. Yeah, I mean, listen, it was nice to see her, you know, finally get back to the winner's circle. She was obviously placed first in her career debut at Saratoga last summer. She didn't win that day, but she was placed first after trouble late. Um, and then, you know, Pletcher just sort of ran her right into graded stakes races. They tried turf. They tried a lot of different things with her. It was good to see her back sprinting on the dirt last time, and she did prevail. If I'm being honest, I wasn't blown away with that one. She got a perfect trip. Um, I thought she ran okay, but it didn't really do a lot for me. I, I do think she's going to have to run better than that in this field. Todd also has the seven, two dozen roses who chased the queen of the three-year-old filly set in Maryland, <laughs> Las Citas, last time out. That horse came back to win last week in the Beyond the Wire Stakes with the 72 buyer. She has now won three in a row. Two dozen roses just hasn't run a fast race yet. That's the real problem with her, right? She just hasn't run fast. I, I liked her... Um, the when she broke her maiden, another one for Pletcher was placed first in her uh, for her maiden win at Saratoga. I thought she ran well that day. I really liked that performance from her, and she was going to win if she didn't get nailed coming through on the inside late in that race. And then Pletcher just immediately stretched her out, which I sort of understand. When you watch her run, you feel like she wants to go longer than this. But as soon as he cut her back to sprint two starts back, she won again. She was closing that day. I just sort of felt like, I don't know that I think she's good enough to win this, Dan, but there's a lot of speed in here. I think she will be running at the end of this race, and she should be a good price in this race. And like Miss Imperial, cutting back to six could be key. Her yeah. two best races have come at six furlongs. Mattress Mac ships in the five, workaholic, wheeling back on, oh, about two weeks rest after finishing third against the boys at Mahoning Valley. A pair of buyer tops in her last two races. Yeah. Uh, she's gotten a little tactical speed. I think there is a question of class and yeah. whether she's better on a synthetic surface. Yeah, those are all, all valid questions. Listen, for the most part, her races since her debut sprinting on the turf, I mean, they're fine. She sh shows up every time and runs her race. She's just a little slow for this field. Let's take a look at our top selection for the Cicada Stakes, the feature race at Aqueduct on Saturday. We're both going to go back to Miss Imperial, the number eight, hoping that the cutback in distance and this nice outside yeah. post position leads to a good trip in the second flight while in the clear. Yeah, I just think she deserves another chance off that last one because I think she actually ran a winning race last time. This, the cutback to six probably works for her, and I love where she's drawn on the outside. Mike's going 837. I'm going 8265 and the $100,000 Cicada Stakes, the feature at Aqueduct. Make sure to get down with a DRF Bets account. Sign up at bets.drf.com and double your action because with DRF Bets, it's as easy as ready, set, bet. An approximate post time for the Cicada, 537 Eastern. Good luck.